Hey guys, what's going on? Garen here again, G Tactics Protection here at Zinc Arms. Of course, as always, you know, we always in the building. Just wanted to talk to you guys real quick about how to, you know, do the procedure for buying a handgun here in the state of Maryland. Other states, it might be different, but Maryland, typically, you're going to follow the same steps. We decided to come up with this video, you know, me and Mr. Rockoff Johnson, he back there, you know, always behind the camera with his sister's pants on. We decided we wanted to make this video because people are always coming in after they get their HQLs, they're wearing carries, ready to buy a new firearm. And it's mainly people that took their wear and carry class that their instructors didn't go through the process of buying a gun, what they needed, like needing their HQL still, all right? So we decided to go through and make this quick little video for y'all, let y'all know what the process is. Once you completed your class, you get your HQL in the email. I don't care if you got your wear and carry, that does not supplement for your HQL. Once you have your HQL, you come in, you already know what kind of gun you want. You want to test out a couple different ones, see how they feel, whatever. You went to the range and found one you really like. Whether I have it here or not, I have to order it. You got to complete the paperwork for it. First step is whether you're in store or at home, you can do it yourself. The Maryland 77R on a state police website. You fill that out, put all your information in there, fill it out completely. Now, the one thing I always check behind on people doing and make sure that it's done properly is when you do the 77R, it asks what your occupation is. You have to be specific. You cannot say just construction or any just random position. If you're an electrical engineer, you're an electrical engineer. If you're a custodian, you're a school custodian. If you do whatever, if you're a carpenter, I'm a carpenter or I'm a diesel mechanic. You have to be specific. If you're not specific enough to the investigator that's checking it or just in general specific enough to any of them, they will literally wait until that seventh day when you're supposed to pick up your gun and kick it back and say, oh, occupation is not specific enough. So they'll wait till the seventh day to kick your application back. And then when you come in or I'll contact you or anybody else contacts you, it restarts that seven days all over again. To try to avoid that, be as specific as possible. Now, once you complete that, you bring the application and the pin number that it emails you into the store. Or if you're already here, nice and easy. I need that application and that pin number to finish my part of it. While you're doing, while I'm doing that, I will have you doing the ATF form, which is the 4473. Yes, it's a lot of paperwork. You got to do it. No, it's not a technical registry, but got to know what you're getting, what kind of gun it is, everything. There has to be a paper trail to say who got this gun in case it's stolen, used in a crime, whatever, when it's recovered. All right. So you do your 4473 knock all of that out i verify put the guns information into the system with the state police with the atf pay for the gun boom your seven days begins right then and there now i know a lot of people have came in here and talking about or saying that oh i can't pick it up till the eighth day or the tenth day or whatever honestly i don't know where you're buying your firearms from that they're making you wait till the eighth day nine ten days or whatever after that on that seventh day you will get an email from the state police saying, congratulations, you have not been disapproved. That's the kicker. It confuses the hell out of people because you come, it comes to your email at 6 a.m. If you're just waking up and you see that email from MSP, you automatically, state police, oh, what the hell is this? So you look at it immediately. If you're just waking up and see, oh, you have not been disapproved, a lot of people, a lot of people automatically think, they're telling me I'm not approved for this gun. It's saying disapproved. They word it that way, kind of in the confusion, the confusion, but it's also because by legitimately, unless you're banned by law, they can't technically approve you. They can only disapprove you. So this is their way of saying, oh, well, you're not disapproved. Go pick up your gun. On that seventh day, when you get that email, unless the, you're showing me something shady, something's wrong, I can tell something's a little bit off. There's no reason for me not to release that gun to you on that seventh day. Now, we all know not everybody can make it in on that seventh day. 
you have up till the 30th day to come pick up that gun. Once that 30th day hits, I have to rerun your background, which is going to be another couple days. Not going to be the complete seven days, but it's going to be reran for another couple days, typically three to four. Now, once you come and pick up your gun, that's when you should be looking at buying your ammo, whether it's range ammo or self-defense. Preferably, and I'm not saying that for being a gun shop owner or anything, but you should be getting at least one box of each, if not two or three. If you're going to train, you need to train. You're going to have a gun for self-defense. You need to have a gun for self-defense. You need it loaded with self-defense ammo. Can you technically use ball ammunition for self-defense? Yeah, you can, but you're fucking stupid. Okay? You do. That's just what it is. So. The paperwork is quick and easy. It'll be hard if you make it hard. <laughs> Some of y'all like it hard. But it'll be hard if you make it hard. As long as you keep it simple, it's good. But I think for right now, that's about it. I'll probably, uh, matter of fact, here, just to make it a little bit easier for you. So this is where the 4473 starts off. This is for me and the shop. Some places still use paper. This, I like digital. One, because digital is easier to back up and keep track of. But I don't know if a lot of people know it, that you're not FFLs, most of y'all don't need to know it. Before we, after five years, we could get rid of our paperwork. Now, for as long as we're in business, we have to keep all of this paperwork from here on. Digital is always easiest to keep track of when you're doing hundreds of applications a, a year or thousands. I still keep paper backups, but this is the main ones I keep because if I have to do a trace for the ATF or anything, this is the easiest way for me to find it and send it off to them. All right. Now, the other one is right here, state police website. This is the website right here you would create a login on for your carry permit, your 77 R's and everything. Create the login, log in, do whatever you got to do. If you already got a login, log in. Now, the problem comes into play with a lot of people. All of us nowadays in the digital era have a ton of passwords we have to remember. It's hard to remember all of them. You can always reset your password. But what gets a lot of people in trouble is every 45 days on this website, your password expires. If you don't pay attention, go in and change it, or you, know, you keep trying to use the same password, it gives you four times of trying to log in. After that fourth time, it will lock you out the system for 24 to 48 hours. Or you got to get MSP to unlock it. If you put the password in once or twice that you think it should be and it doesn't let you in, just reset the password. All right. Make it easy on yourself. But the problem is make sure you got a pen and paper. Write your, your passwords and the past passwords into your notes on your phone. We all got phones with notes on them. All right because you cannot use the same password within five years. So every time you change it, you got to change it to something complete, not completely different, but change the numbers, special characters, something. Your password has to be for the state police, at least 12 characters, one number and one special character. You have to abide by those rules or it will never let you log in or create an account. All right. If you guys want me to go a little bit more in detail on this and everything, walk a little bit more walkthrough, let me know. I can see about doing that, but in actuality, probably won't because once you log into this site or even a 4473, that is people's personal information. It's my personal information if I log in. Y'all don't need that, and I'm not going through the work or having Mr. Rago Johnson go through all the work of blurring that shit out. So, yeah. Log in, create your account, and figure it out. All right? So the next time, y'all take it easy and get your throat goat. See y'all later.